All right, I'm here with Kelly Stack, and Kelly um, finished up a great game here, and, and uh, just talk about how much fun it's been playing for uh, you know the, this Chinese team. Um, we're having a blast so far this season. Uh, we started off a little slow in our first weekend in Toronto, but um, ever since that first weekend, we've kind of you know come together as a team and figured out how to win, and uh, we've had a really good winning streak going so far, and we're having a, a really good time doing it. And um, you have the full complement, the full game, and uh, just talk about how you've worked at all aspects of the game. Yeah, I mean, I work really hard. I try to be the best at everything I do, so uh, I really take pride in, um, you know, being a two-way player, winning face-offs, um, doing little things that help the team win, um, you know, battling in the corner, starting the breakout, whatever the team needs to win, I, that's what I like to do. Yeah, a lot of people think of you as like the Tom Brady with speed, so you got the <laughs> You got the composure, the, the confidence to win, your discipline, but you also have a little bit of wheels to you too. Um, when, was one of your, uh, when was one of your favorite moments in hockey? Uh, it actually happened this year. One of my favorite moments in hockey, uh, we played Montreal at the Bell Center uh, in front of a huge crowd, and we were missing Nora in that, so um, our first Chinese goalie played, and we ended up beating them. Um, thrilling game. I think we won 3-2, to two, but it was awesome. Just playing in front of a packed crowd, fans screaming, um, and, you know, a game that we probably weren't supposed right. to win, so it's definitely a hockey memory that I'll remember forever. Now, how about this? Michael Jordan, LeBron James, Tiger Woods, the three people that I've ever rooted against. Miss, miss, miss. I can't stand you. I hate you. Get rid of the puck. Get rid of the ball. Whatever it is. I miss. You're the only woman I've ever had to do that with. What does that make you feel like? So in other words, you were at BC. I had a lot of friends at Northeastern, mm -hmm. a couple friends at BU. We're talking hockey player friends on the teams, and I actually rooted against you nonstop. Oh my God, that hurts my feelings. So, 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 so what can you take from that though? How much does that mean in a good way? Yeah, I mean, it, it means a lot just knowing that there's people out there that just enjoy the game and enjoy uh, good competition. and. Um, you know, all the people that root against me make me play harder, so I, I enjoy it. And then the question you don't want to hear, you've already heard a million times, and that is that, um, you know, you're one of the best players in the world all time and right now, not going to the Olympics. And um, just talk about how, even though that happened, how you're not going to give up. You know, you could easily just give up and be, you know, dejected. Instead, you're gritting your teeth. You just scored two amazing goals today, probably the nicest goals we've seen this year. And talk about how, you know, if, uh, if things don't go your way, politics or whatever, you just still step it up. Yeah, I mean, I wanted to play hockey this year, not making the Olympic team, that wasn't going to hold me back. Um, and I had this great opportunity to play for KRS and um, help another country's women's hockey program grow. Um, so I wanted to just keep playing and, you know, make an impact on the game in a global way. So that, I think that's what we're doing with KRS. And um, Talk, What can you uh, tell the young girls that are looking up to you? Uh, I would just tell young girls to stay focused and have whatever they're doing, have fun, um, you know, surround themselves with a good group of people and uh, whatever they, whatever goals they set, it's up to them to accomplish them. However hard they work is how far they're going to go. I love how you're a humble person and all that, Put a lot for you too. Yeah, the game of hockey has been, you know, a huge part of my life since I was four years old. Um, that means I've been playing for 26 years, so um, I'm not ready to give it up yet. And Everything that I've learned about life and sports has come from hockey. Um, relationships that I've made with friends and uh, just, you know, learning about working hard and um, overcoming obstacles. The sport of hockey's taught me all about that. And then, people in the stand said this is the best they've seen you play. Those two goals I saw you score were amazing. You hit the crossbar a bunch of times. I think you're the first person to ever dent a crossbar. <laughs> So, I don't know about that. I think Ovechkin's probably dented a couple. But. Yeah, maybe Ovi, but you know, <laughs> I, I got to see this live in person. So um, better when I don't have people here watching me. But um, I knew that there was going to be a big crowd from BC here with all the girls on the blades that went to BC. So it was awesome to have everyone here watching us. Last night you came off the ice. Right at the end of the game, you passed over to Alex Carpenter for for um, empty netter, and you said <laughs> the best thing I've ever heard in my life. I said, why'd you pass it over to her? Are you trying to be nice to her? And he said, well, yeah, but the main reason is because I don't believe in scoring empty netters. If it's there, I'll do it, but I really don't want to score an empty netter. That made me know that you're so competitive. 
Yeah, I'd, I'd rather score a goal with a goalie in the net, but um, the, I think the play, we watched it on video again this morning, and the D came over to me, she was wide open in the middle, so I'd have been silly to shoot it and have it get deflected and not go in. So. Well, good answer, but I heard it last night, and it made me feel so good. I was so proud of you when you said, I, I don't want to shoot on an yeah, empty net. I don't want to. But thank you for coming on. I wish you the best of luck and keep playing as long as you can. You're doing awesome. Right. I'm here with Alex Carpenter, and Alex, can you talk about how you played against a lot of the girls that were on the blades or on your own team and how it's kind of neat to play at the professional level now? Yeah, it's definitely pretty cool, uh, you know, obviously going to Boston College and playing with the majority of the girls here and, uh, you know, it just shows what a great program that we had there and how uh, skilled a lot of the players are. And it's great being able to, uh, you know, come back and talk with them and, you know, ultimately play against them. And uh, you grew up, your dad was an NHL player, not just an NHL player, but a heck of a player. Uh, what was it like uh, growing up having him as your dad? And Yeah, it was pretty awesome. Um, you know, he, he would always come to our games. We went, uh, you know, I was playing youth hockey, and just little insights he would give us, I think, that ultimately helped me, um, you know, become the hockey player I am, and I owe a lot of my successes to him. And I know that, uh, you know, genetically you got some competitive juices from him and so forth, but um, just talk about how you've uh, worked hard over the years to be one of the best in the world, if not the best and the most competitive. Yeah, you know, I think that's just something that, um, you know, you get from a lot of your teammates. Um, obviously, my first Olympics playing with Kelly Stack, you know, you learn a lot from those kinds of players. And I think that's just something that, um, you know, I've been fortunate enough to be surrounded by a lot of great players and, um, you know, just being able to soak that up. Well, you're very humble, and I thank you for coming on. You're an awesome player. Great. Good luck. Thank, thank, thank you, you very much. Take care. Thank you. Thank you too.